<sighs> Let's draw. Wrist watch. Okay. I see circle. Or blueberry. Or peanut. Or spider. I see watermelon. Or planet. Or pond. Or soccer ball. I see cookie. Or clock. Or mouse. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. Draw a speedboat. I see elbow. Or armor. Or hexagon. I am no good at art, for what it's worth. I see pool, or water, uh, or the Great Wall of China, or beach. I see garden hose, or diving board. Close enough. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. I see peanut, or shoe, suck. or spoon, or moon, or potato. Oh, I know, it's roller coaster. He knows. Oh, I know. It's bow tie. He knows. I see line. Or street light. Or palm tree. Or camel. I see fire hydrant. Or tree. Or flamingo. Or sheep. I see castle. Or broccoli. Or toe. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. Draw a garden. All right. I see stairs, uh, or elbow, or stitches, or yoga. I see armor. I see shoe. I see bush, or bow tie, or ambulance, or gear. I see tree. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you're you're so smart, you machine. We're gonna try this again. Draw an umbrella. All right. I uh, see diving board. Oh, I know. It's umbrella. Nice. I see nail. Or music note. Or pants. Or knee. I see zigzag. You see a knee. Or skyscraper. Or the Great Wall of China. Uh, wait. The Great Wall of China? Really? I'm impressed. diving board. Sorry. I couldn't guess it. <laughs> oh god, that's Oh I know. It's garden hose. Wait, how does it know that's a garden hose, but like it's confused what a knee, a leg, and the Great Wall of China are. Uh I see nose. Oh I know. It's water. Yeah, I got it. Uh, oh I know. It's seesaw. Whoa! Jeez. Okay. I see potato. Or cookie. Or face. Oh, I know. It's smiley face. Yeah, he knows. Jeez. <laughs> That's not bad. I'm impressed. A symbol for water, a seesaw, a smiley face. Holy crap. Uh. Yeah. I'm still impressed to thought this thing was the Great Wall of China. Um, yeah, no, show me the Great Wall of China. Like, I, I want to see the Great Wall of China here somewhere. Uh, matched a nail, a knee, and a hospital. I still want to know, like, what is that Great Wall of China image? Draw a skull. Well, that's not happening. I see rainbow. I see light bulb. Uh, oh, I know. It's skull. He knows. Wow. Okay. I see uh, rainbow. Or bun. Or helmet. Oh, I know. It's car. There we go. Draw a toilet. Um. We'll try. I see elbow. Ah, jeez. Or, uh, or broom. Or skyscraper. Or shoe. I see snorkel. Or drums. Oh, I know. It's toilet. He knows. Alright. 
pillow. I see diving board. Or bench. Or square. Oh, I know. It's pillow. Nice. Draw a tornado. I see squiggle. Or garden hose. Oh, I know. It's tornado. Yeah, I... I'm more or less relying on what other people have drawn. I see uh, line. Or diving board. Oh, I know. It's umbrella. Yeah, it's... So... Wow. I mean, this one looks similar to the other thing I drew. Um, where was the other umbrella I drew? It seems to really like to ask me about this thing called an umbrella. I think it'd be funny though if some like real artist took to this game and were able to quickly, very quickly, draw these very high resolution uh, things. A snake. Um, I see line. Or ocean. Uh, or river. Uh, or juice. Geez. Or mustache. Uh, I see speed yeah, bone. no, I'm not doing or well at drawing this. Or fish. or fish. I see hot dog. Or roller coaster. Close enough. Oh, that's how you draw a roller coaster, I apparently. I see diving board. Oh, I know. It's me. All right, draw pants. Um, I see line, or fence, or stereo. Oh, I know, it's pants. Oh, I know. Draw the Great Wall of China in under 20 seconds. You know how they say Rome wasn't built in a day? The Great Wall of China was drawn in under 20 seconds. But my God, how am I going to do this? Um... Okay, I have no idea. I guess big parallel wavy lines or something. Or river. Uh, or string uh, bean. Let's see. Or moon. I see harp. Or tennis racket. Uh, or leaf. Or feather. I see brain. Yeah, it's a roller coaster. Sorry. I couldn't guess it. Draw a saxophone in 20 seconds. I see that, here. Or water that slide. looks like it's got all the or buttons here, right? I see squirrel. And it's got the like the hose. parallel thing back or there, and then it's got the mouthpiece or over here somewhere. I see and, bulldozer. Or pizza. Um, or ambulance. Sorry, I couldn't guess Draw a newspaper in under 20 seconds. I see diving board. I could square. maybe do this one here. Or microwave. Or postcard. I see spreadsheet. I see passport. Or book. Oh, I know. It's newspaper. Alright, cool. Well, he knows. He's so smart. How does he know? Okay, it does look like a postcard. Somewhat looks like a passport. Oh. Some interesting ideas of what a newspaper is. Okay. That's cool. Ah, can a neural network learn to recognize doodling? Um, I'd actually like to know more about this. Like, uh, what other AI experiments do they have going on? Other than just quick draw. Because I. Let's see. Handwriting with a neural net. Here we go. Here's something I could maybe do. Because uh, I was curious if this could apply to chess players' score sheets. Alright, wait. Um, thing. Alright. Well, that's kind of cool. Whatever. Um, quick draw is addictive, though. Gotta say. 
Wait, can I not go back a page? Does the backspace not go back a page? Is there no way to return to the location from which I came? Um, okay. AI duet. Oh, now we're talking. A piano that responds to you. Do, 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 do. Oh, nice. Do, do, do. Is that all? Is that the tutorial? Oh nice, I can key things in. This is silly, isn't it? Wait, can I do... What's the Rugrats theme? No. Okay, here we go. Okay, so... I kind of like this random scattering thing it does. If you give it a scale, it'll just improvise over the scale. Huh. That? That sounds super cheerful. So that's interesting. So if I play a shorter run like this, then it just tends to focus on the higher note. But if I play a larger scale, like... Hmm. It seems to really harp on the whole notes I hold on to longer. That's an interesting thing. Oh, wow. That's an interesting little demo. Uh, what else is there? Bird sounds. Sound maker. Alright, what is this? Unusual sounds with machine learning. Oh, oh a harp? Harp is a nice instrument. Hmm, I'm not sure that that's too sonorous. That's too weird. That could work. Yeah, nothing revolutionary there, but cool to see that Google's up to it. What else is there? Um, Norse and WaveNet starter code. Um. 
I better say Morse. I'm tired. Uh, let's see. Beat Blender. Melody Mixer. They have a lot of things involving music and rhythm and such. Um, hmm. Yeah, so is that it? Quick Draw is by far the most... Oh, here we are. What's this? Uh, auto Draw. It's a new kind of drawing tool that pairs the magic of machine learning with drawings from talented artists. Oh, wow. Now that's cool. I'm actually kind of impressed. Huh? Why is Google doing this? Like, is this a runnable thing? Oh my god. This like solves all my drawing problems ever. So if I like want to draw a snowman, um, um, now, yeah. I could pick various snowmen. Oh my gosh. Wow, I, I'm surprised. Um, naturally, the antithesis of this is that... Okay, so how do I clear the slate? Can I clear the slate? There's got to be a clear slate button somewhere. Oh, new page? New page. Oh, I'm out of pages. Okay. Draw. Auto draw. Uh, start over. Okay. So, hmm. What's the weirdest thing I could attempt to draw? Like, what if I just do that? Uh, yes, do you mean this? Do you mean that? Do you mean... Oh! <laughs> Clearly, that's what I meant. The Christ the Redeemer statue. Wow, okay. You can get some interesting results with this thing. Yeah, the Statue of Liberty, uh, some kind of fighting person, various garments, football player, a castle, um, yeah, all this based on me just swiping a line across the screen. Yes, like, did you mean any of these things, you know, because you might have meant one of these things. I could have meant one of these two different ties, a third tie, a fourth tie, fifth tie, a golfer? How does a diagonal line across the screen represent a golfer? I don't see the diagonal line anywhere in this design. Huh. I'm confused. Regardless, um, yeah, auto draw. That's fantastic, honestly. I mean, like, I was concerned I'd never be able to draw at this kind of skill. And while I still might not ever be so talented as to draw something this fantastic, you know, perhaps I could at least learn to draw in such a way that um, I could collaborate with professional artists and such through this kind of experience. Who knew? That's really cool. I could spend all day doing this. So if I just like draw an X, it asks, is that what you meant? Is that what you meant? Did you mean this? Oh, who doesn't want a glass of wine? Another glass of wine, eyedropper, a diploma, or scroll, outfit, another outfit, a crayon. That's interesting. 
Uh, so naturally you might try to draw something like that and we'll ask like huh there we go there's the waveform I was searching for but you know I'm impressed just like how much high quality art there is here and then if I want to try to put a sailboat in the middle of this um, I mean I'm no uh, no Rembrandt or anything like that, but I could have this sailboat. I could have, oh my goodness. Uh, this is, the sky's the limit with this stuff. That's beautiful. I don't know what that is. Oh, a cruise ship. Another cruise ship. A cruise ship coming at you. I, huh. Interesting choice of art. I guess it's thematic in a way. Motorboat, a person on a surfboard. Um, I'm confused. That one of these things does not look like the others. Still, that's pretty cool. Diving board, sure. Okay, and then if I try to like add a stick figure on top of the diving board, um, they ask, do you mean a unicycle? Because, you know, <laughs> yeah, a unicycle on a diving board. That's exactly what I meant. How did you know, Google? How did you know? All right, can I move this down? Great. Because, you know, on top of this unicycle, on a diving board in the middle of the ocean. Um, I might want to have a person, I don't know, just, oops, uh, let's go back to auto drawing. I might want to have a person um, who's just like juggling some balls in the air. So, can we have a juggler, please? I would love to, oh, yeah, a rose. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was trying to draw. Or a baseball bat, or, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, that's totally what I meant. <coughs> I mean, that is kind of like juggling. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? What is this? What is this supposed to be? Uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's totally... <laughs> uh, I don't even understand how that's related. Um, a server deck? Another server deck? Yeah, so we have a person playing tennis. Okay. On top of a unicycle, on a diving board, in the middle of the ocean. Um, how do I draw sharks to accompany this? How do you draw a shark? I mean, I'm gonna try. It's gonna be bad. But... If I draw it in a convincing bad way, at least we might get something interesting out of it. All right, so yeah, to get a shark, you just like draw that sort of thing, right? And I ask, do you mean a home? Do you mean a propeller cap? Um, do you mean a landmine with a uh, pinwheel thing on it? A hat? Another diving board? A rocket? A tent? Um, not sure if I meant one of these things. Not sure if th I meant any of these things. Is there a way I can go back? Um, hmm. Just trying to pick one. Because this is entertaining. Oh, a bench? Um, that's not exactly the same thing as a shark. 
Also, if that's not a rocket, what else could it be, I wonder? Alright, yeah, now our tent in the middle of the ocean. Um... Hmm. Apparently that's... It's not exactly what I was going for, but... Um... You know, of these, I'm not going to pick the diving board. I'm not going to pick the other diving board, because we already have one. Yeah, okay, we have a huge cowboy hat. Um, no, that doesn't quite lend itself to a narrative. Oh, there's more. Beautiful. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was drawing. A sailboat. Some other kind of boat. Um, a letter? A pool? A postcard. Interesting. A shoe. Alright, so. Hmm. Yeah, no, this is really cool, though. Sure. If I could just position that, perhaps? Oh, cool. I could pick these up and even throw them off the card if I wanted to. Um, can I zoom this? I see there are corners to it, but there isn't a cursor that like does anything fancy. Um, oh wait, is that not? Mm, I wonder what that's supposed to be. That looks like a pool itself. Yeah, okay, it's not exactly what I was going for then. But I can discard that and try again. Um, so... Alright. A beer? Yeah, you, you gotta have a beer. Um, definitely have to enjoy your beer while you're playing tennis on top of a... Uh, unicycle. Yeah, that's very important. Um, let's see, how am I going to let this person hold on to the beer? And how much beer is too much? Yeah, that looks great. Um, now, I want a moon in the sky, because I think that would look more beautiful than the sun. Honestly. Um... So, this is my attempt to draw a moon. Bingo. Uh, I mean, we could do this moon. We could do that one. We could do a huge ear in the sky, because, you know, my moon kind of looked like an ear. Kind of looked like a lemon or a leaf. No, but we're going for some kind of moon. Yeah. And then draw some stars up in the sky and recognize that this doesn't... Oh! Um, yeah, no, that's exactly what I was trying to draw. It's a school of fish that, um, they're flying fish. They're interested in that beer. All right, um... And then draw some stars up here. Uh, yeah, I get... Yeah, perfect. Nailed it. Alright. Gold star. Starfish. Taj Mahal! That's exactly what I was going for. So we have the Taj Mahal just floating out here in the ocean. Um, all right, I think that completes our photo, unless I want to do something fancy with this, but well, let's have this pivot right off the edge. So right there, our person have one leg on the board. Um, 
yeah, I think that that pretty much sums it up. Um, I can draw. This is amazing. Wow. All thanks to Google Draw, or whatever the crap this is called. Um, I'm impressed. Never before could I create such nonsense. Um, hmm, that's such a rapid pace. Um, is there anything else I could add to this to make it more interesting? Like, what would I even consider adding? I don't know. Okay, let's move our Taj Mahal over here. Yeah, I think it, we nailed it. We nailed the essence of modern sport. Um, I wonder when such generated images um, will be featured in museums. It seems to me there's a lot of potential for this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the they say that uh, brevity is the soul of wit. I wonder if one could say similar things for artwork and just creativity. Like, there's some kind of minimalism going, well, I'd like to think that these Google images are pretty simple um, for the concepts they represent. Minus the Taj Mahal there and the beer, which I guess are more complicated on purpose. But a lot of these things look pretty abstract. Um. Hmm. Well, it occurs to me I'm like a couple of centuries behind on my art history. Because, yeah, I mean, you've had Cubism and uh, other exciting art movements preceding Cubism. Where abstract figures uh, were drawn. And so this is like a way to return back to that, I want to say Impressionism is the term I'm looking for, the period I'm looking for. I'm not sure. Either way, um, this is a beautiful image. It's a pity it doesn't quite fit on the card, but what am I going to do? Like, there's nothing I can do to make this fit better on the paper. I think it's more than acceptable how it is. Um, I just wish there weren't so much dead space, but I couldn't figure out how to draw stars that didn't look hokey. So. Yeah, I, th I think this is encouraging in general. Um, oh, actually, I know what I could do to better occupy the space. So, have the moon... Yeah, it doesn't have to foot fully on the card. And have this up there in the background. That would better balance the image. Um... Yeah, that's cool. It doesn't have to be so close by either. It could be like off in the distance. Um, oops, and the idea is I was going to have a little tributary or something like this just running alongside it. Of course, um, this is not going to generate nearly the sort of image that I'm seeking, but, um, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm, actually, I don't know what I'm going for here. Um, I could discard that. It looks kind of weird. Oh, I could pick individual sections and crop them and delete them, too. Check that out. Yeah, so like, yeah, and then we can put the moon back in the sky, and it can just balance the image. There we go. See? Easy. 
Um, yeah, that's more artistic. In my mind. Didn't quite fit on the page, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so with that, I think we should probably wrap things up. I know this is a far shorter stream than we normally run, but it's been an exciting week. Um, hopefully you all are coping with GDPR pretty well. Hopefully it's not causing too much havoc in your days. Um, and whatever else is going on. I understand that, like, if you're streaming in the IRL category, unless you're doing something truly unique, you're not going to make it to the top. And since it's such a large category and everybody streams in it, because it's such a large category, um, that unless you're at the top, there's really... Your goal in streaming in this category is not to gain viewers. If that's your goal, it's just not going to happen. But it allows you to just be out there and express yourself. And I think images like these do that. I like to think this is pretty creative and fun. I'm impressed. I'd like to see this integrate with the Google Quick Draw. So you could do a more complete game of charades. Where you have parties, neural networks, people, whatever. Uh, participating in this drawing and guessing game. And you could even potentially have neural networks drawing the artwork, trying to impress other neural networks or impress human players. Um, I think there's a lot of room, or a lot of potential for the um, creativity here. Oh, so when I was saying that Brevity was a solo wit, um, what I... I guess I was trying to get to in a most roundabout fashion as I'm no comedy expert is that uh, comedy has this whole yes and mentality so like every time some unexpected thing uh, I encountered here I said yes that's exactly what I was going for and you know we get this fun little result here um, so I guess the moral of the story there is be willing to be flexible and creative. Um, don't hamstring yourself into like a preconceived notion of what you're originally trying to draw or develop or create and just see, experience things as an experience or an experiment. Um, because with art um, and with many things in life, there's no perfect right or wrong answer. You can be creative um, as long as you're not doing something deeply scientific or mathematical or something of that sort. There's generally answers that are varying degrees of good and varying degrees of bad with pretty much anything you do. Um, and again, exceptions to that sort of rule would be very mathematical or science oriented or, I don't know, accountancy or some sort of thing that is in its own way a science, which has a methodology for determining a right answer. Um, in general, um, you can try to think outside the box, even like you know, I develop software, I design software, I test software, I do all kinds of things with software. And um, with all that, rarely are there questions that are closed. But even when there are closed questions, the question's going to arise, well, is that the really the relevant subject or question to be focusing on? Like, um, you've heard of the traveling salesman problem, and everybody studied it. But 
sometimes you need to take a step back and ask like what's the real problem we're trying to solve here do we need the optimal route do we need just a uh, a route that um, satisfies some set of criteria um, do we need just a way of better tracking information so you can take a lot of problems that sound like technology problems and morph them back into the real requirements, um, the real things people are asking for. And everything's up to negotiation. Oh. Pardon me. But yeah, so that's that. That's life philosophy and uh, Google drawing stuff. So, since we do this so often, why don't we do one more game of chess here, you know? For our loyal fans who come around and stick around for the chess, let's play a game. Check. Okay. So he's gonna castle, and I'm gonna take this. Yeah, there we go. I'll st I'll try to stop. Um, doing that ridiculousness knight takes um, rook takes something else ridiculous yeah here we go here let's have some fun I'm not supposed to play that because um, it has some pretty bad consequences if he does go ahead and check me there but he didn't so we're gonna see where this goes only because I've played the alternative a thousand times and I think this is worth exploring at least once. <laughs> never play f6? Well, he's right. Here it never should have been played. Um, but I played it. So... But no, that's cool. Uh, Zish was here before. He's our loyal fan. Uh, he's from a land where they have to deal with this stuff with uh, GDPR, which must be a huge regulatory nightmare for pretty much every company out there. Um, on the other hand, one can think it's something positive for uh, users' privacy or expectation of how websites work and such, but if I remember right, if I heard correctly, like the whole thing with GDPR is that once they've sent a notification and informed you, um, it's actually kind of a two-way street there that, oh, well, now they've informed you, so you, you know what your expectation is with them. And they don't necessarily have to update you every time they change your privacy policy or something. Which, I mean, if that weren't part of GDPR, that if companies didn't get something out of it, it wouldn't happen. So, I might have misheard something, but basically every service I've ever signed up for, um, I got a notification saying, hey, we just did this uh, change to our policies or whatever, we're going to better respect your rights and stuff, but or at least let you know what your rights are with um, your personal information on our platform. Which I guess in some way is exciting. Um, yeah, I'm just, I've got the longest run on sentence here and I don't know where to go with it. All right, do your worst. Check me if you dare. He probably dares, cause like, I, it's a bluff. Um, but also, I'm really not afraid of the check. I'm just going to munch a pawn. Um, so I could lose my knight, you know. Well, uh, that was exciting. Yeah, I forgot that knights go backwards. Alright. Ah, so apparently this is what happens if you castle queenside in the Berlin after playing f6. 
don't play F6. Let your children know, don't play F6. Um, I'm going to see if I can catch him with like Rook B1 at some point. I'm going to assume he's going to forget about it. Because that's a really easy thing to forget about here, especially if I try to fluster him a bit. I just have to do nothing for another minute or two. Um, yes, there is an increment, but I'm not thoroughly impressed with my opponent's play. Solid as it is, it's not impressive. It's not compelling, somehow. Oh, that's clever. Well, all right, fine. You gonna check me now? What do I have to do to get you to check me? I understand you're avoiding a rook exchange on purpose because you think I'm going to um, win a tempo if you exchange rooks. And while that may be correct, um, Really, the lengths to which to go to avoid such a trade um, could be to your detriment as well. Sometimes you just have to make compromises. Although knight of four is pretty good here too. I should have played king c6. Alright, so I'm going to have to trade here. That sucks. Yeah, you got your tempo. Go enjoy it. All right. Ah, uh, so do I take it? It's disgusting, but I will. Let's push. All right, now he checks me. Oh, I can't do that. Let's do this one instead. Alright. And just hit the rook. Hit the rook again. Hit the bishop. Um, and then race our pawn a bit. Now he should try to hit the pawn from behind uh, at some point here. There might not be a really easy opportunity to do that, but if afforded the opportunity, that might be a nice thing to do. Um, so I think I've put up ample resistance here. Um, at least enough to scare him. Okay, we'll push the pawn. Um, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I think I got away with it. So, oh, no rematch offer. Not too surprising. Can we end on that win, though? I don't think so. Let's try one more. Which pawn will it be this time? Yeah. It feels somewhat unsatisfying after some number of games that go that way. Um. Hmm. Alright. I think this might be unsound. Pretty sure this is unsound, but um, all right, fine. We'll play this. All right, do I? Yeah, I think I do go like bishop b5 or bishop c4 or something here. I don't remember, but the rating system always prevails. So if, as long as I have the higher rating, I can pretty much play anything and spook my opponent. 
you can get away with quite a few things. Sup, uh, Cormac there. Uh, so, yeah, give up the bishop pair. Probably not even going to castle kingside, you know, but... Um, just wrapping up the week here. Probably going to wrap up the stream pretty soon, because I'm exhausted. But, you know, maybe I'll come back tomorrow morning or something. Um... Ace Rook did invite me to go visit um, the tournament he's running here, so I should probably do that sometime this weekend, too. Um, but uh, it's, I don't know. It's certainly going and seeing the tournaments is going to be fun. I'm not playing in it because it's a huge time sink, but I could go and stop by and see how it goes. Wait. What's this? This is my shenaniganry, isn't it? Yeah, let's have some fun here. Yeah. Well, you know, it, yeah, of course, yeah, he'll do an excellent job running it. And I'm sure it'll go off quite well. Um. Or however you describe the running of an event. Um, so this is my idea. I was hitting g7 here. I didn't think about g6. I should have thought about that. Because that complicates everything here. Um, hmm. Oh, but his bishop's not hitting f4. So I can just run away. And I have access to the d5 square. You know, this is beautiful. Oh, no, you don't want to play h5 here. No, that's just silly. Um, I know you don't like my queen where it's at. But if you don't like where it's at right now, you don't like where it's going next. Not that I know where it's going next, but you, you don't want to provoke this. Um, so I'm gambiting the f-pawn again. Yeah, so he does the logical thing and just tries to complete his development. He's going to castle kingside. I'm probably not. <laughs> I've got another plan in mind. Although, he's got bishop d7 here. Bishops go backwards. But that gives up the d5 square, so I could plunk a knight here. Um, now bishop d7, knight ed5. Knight takes, knight takes, queen b2, bishop c3, queen a1, bishop a1. Bishop h3, bishop h8, bishop g2, oh wait, no oh wait, um, so I don't think that's quite worth it for me to go into all that complication. Um, I could just do f5 here. I could do g4. This is confusing. Oh, yeah, further throwing a monkey wrench at things is after we trade knights on d5, you could just play queen e... No, you couldn't. Um, no, you'd have to do queen b2. Still. Yeah, I'm just going to castle this way. He's probably going to castle the same way because he's cowardly. It's a lot easier to be cowardly when you have uh, when you're playing a blitz game. It's difficult to make the decision to go for the gold. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna push here. Um, also, try to avoid like accidentally dropping material. All right. Um, 
Okay, so you castle that way, so I'm just going to take the center instead. Uh, if the bishop runs, then we just take this diagonal. And maybe I throw in a4 if I'm crazy, but probably not. Um, okay, we're going to go for it, because that's what chess is about. It's about the adventure. It's about the journey, not about the destination. Oh, we found it. I thought he was going to try to grab the free pawn, and I just pin his queen. That's wishful thinking, isn't it? All right, so... He didn't take my h-pawn for some reason. Um, so I could play h4 unless he plays it first or unless he plays g5. Yeah, so... Okay, um... We're gonna see where this goes. If I calcul oh, I forgot my h pawn still hangs. Uh, but thankfully, my opponent is accommodating. Um, I've played in games better than this. All right, we have to exchange. I should have taken d6 first, so not all the rooks get traded. Yeah, because this endgame is particularly not appetizing. Um, there are chances here, but it's quite difficult. Alright, so let's lure the king forward. Alright, that was easy enough. Of course, he sees this defensive resource, but I'm getting wager he hasn't studied all these endgames. Oh wait, I'm down a pawn. Why am I the one pushing for the win then? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Yeah, okay, fine. You can have your lucky draw. I'll let you live this time. But only after we've gone for 50 moves here. <laughs> uh, okay, so... We're going to push because we can. Not the, none of this scares him. He's not phased at all. I'm going to push it anyway, because why not? <laughs> We're playing for three results here, guys. Maybe more than three. Uh, oh, that's clever. Yes, okay. This is actually quite difficult to hold now. I have to get my king over this way to get my little fortress going. So the key is to not leave the bishop hanging to some sort of thing where he is allowed to play b6 for free. So as long as he can't play b6 for free, um, this is still a fortress. Yeah, so okay, fine. You get your draw now. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm not claiming it. You want it? Fine. Ah, that was exciting. All right, so yeah, I should not have pushed b5. I should have just shuffled pieces for 45 moves and then pushed b5. But I'm not that evil. Um, like if I'm trying to push to win it all costs. Uh, there are ways to try to play that. White does not have any winning chances, but you can try to play it anyway. 
see if uh, your opponent can find losing chances. Alright, so... The Scandinavian defense. Here, let's put the queen... d6. Nobody studies this one. Not even me. Um, but we're gonna try it. How bad can it be? All right. Um, yep. Now that we've lured the knight onto the fatal b5 square, we're gonna do nothing. Um, to exploit the position of that knight. Alright, so let's kick the knight, because we can. And if this ends up being some terrific opening novelty, then we'll save it for future tournament play. But likely it won't be. Oh. Well, I almost took the knight. I almost took the knight, guys. I'm slightly better than that, but not very much better. <laughs> Alright, so... Do I just play c5 here? Just undermine this completely? Okay... That is a move. It's not the move I would have selected, but it is a move. Let's put the bishop back here. What could go wrong? It seems white's had a little too much fun here. Oh, nice. We're upping the ante. That's exciting. Ooh. Wow. Is that a gambit that I have to decline? Because I don't generally decline gambits. We're taking it. Do I up the stakes further by just offering the rook? Is that the way to play this? Like, if I play queen d4, then he takes on f7. Alright, we're going to offer the rook a different way. Oh, but he's got it's my bishop. I can only take one of my pieces at a time. That's my secret. Alright, so... We're gonna hit the queen. I think this works out. So he takes that, and then we take here, and he takes that, and... Oh, we're down three or something. Leech S says we're down three. Better resign, you know, because that material gauge, it's super convincing. But no, seriously, this is pretty terrible. Because um, he's going to win another pawn there, and I don't have any development. Um, oh no, my bishop's developed. I've got one piece developed. Alright, so we'll go over here. And do I gambit the f-pawn? I think I do. We need to complete our development here. Oh, he doesn't even take the f-pawn. The f-pawn not taker. That's so mean. Alright, so... Um, that exposes the weakness of my a-pawns, so we got to push it. Yeah, okay, I lost a second piece. That didn't quite work out. That's too bad. He wants a rematch. Alright, we'll play a rematch. Here. Let's see if he knows this one. Let's see if he knows this. He knows it. I'm screwed. <laughs> 
Okay, well, we're going to learn something here today. Uh, and that thing we're going to learn is don't play this opening, because it doesn't work. Um, so, there's one small flaw with my position, and that's that everything is hanging. But, you know, other than that, it's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I want to see, like, to what extent this is viable as an opening. Because it's pretty damn hard to refute. It can be refuted. I did study it. it really, the refutation is more about playing g5 than playing h5, but this is still pretty convincing. It forced me um, to react to the threat, which is pretty key. See, I can cripple his pawn structure, but it's not nearly enough. So, I think I castle. And hey, look, we've almost got equality. It's just what we were aiming for as white, is to almost equalize uh, however many moves we are into the game. That's your goal in the opening, is to, like, not lose. Alright, so we just develop our pieces. Make your opponent think a little bit. Pawns can't go backwards, by the way. Um, it's a common misconception that you just want to push all your pawns because they can go backwards. Turns out they can't go backwards. So every time you push one, you have to think about what you're leaving behind. Like, case in point, I'm losing a pawn here. Um, I mean, thankfully I've got this, but... Um, you know, if not for me being able to take there, which I totally foresaw that I'd be able to do and didn't just luck into, um, um, if not for that, you know, this position would be pretty glum here. Alright, it doesn't matter whether I trade rooks or not, so we're going to take here first. If exchanging rooks procured me some advantage, I would have done that instead, but... Yeah. Knight's not too poorly positioned here. Unfortunately, if kicked, it probably has to go back to e4, where it could probably be kicked by knight d6, but... Um, it's not a terrible position. It's not my best position, but it's not bad. Um, yeah, now pawn moves, again, they leave all kinds of weaknesses behind. You want to be very careful about pawn pushes. Um, I'm trying to understand what my opponent's up to here. I think they just blundered a pawn. Because the H pawn can't be defended. I debated moving my E2 knight to try to hunt this down immediately, but turns out, like, other things I can do are more effective here. And yeah, the H3 pawn's out of reach of his knights. And he's intending knight F1, and I couldn't have stopped it, but. Um, well, I could play knight g3, which actually just loses, so probably don't want to do that, but, um, you know, once the knight hops to f1 to h2, or to g4 to h2, I could see what I could do about trying to trap the knight, or displace it, or something, or just get my king active with the couple tempi here. 
those are just a couple free tempi he gave me and um let's see yeah okay we'll reactivate this knight if he can get all his knights hitting my d4 pawn that would be forward progress for him so I'm going to try to fluster that objective. Um, also, I might want to play this. Yeah, it does induce a weakness, but it also gives me some strength. So having the c4 square is actually kind of important and relevant here. Um, and this is not too difficult to hold, so... Alright, now do I put my other knight on f3? Or do I push d5 at some point? If I could push d5 at just the right moment, truly positive outcomes could happen here. Um... All right, so I have to redefend this. Um, yeah, this is the best way to defend it. So now, if I push my ape, oh, a target. That's generous. That's a generous play. Um, I should have done knight e5, though. Knight e5 would have been kind of brilliant. Kind of regretting not playing it. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is fine. This is playable. It's okay. That's the most predictable move ever. So 95 is less appealing here, where I just want to race my king up to uh, b7 square. Oh, that's a fork. I got forked. That sucks. I can still hold this, but... That's unfortunate. Um, King c6 is best. I underestimated it. <sighs> I should have tried playing my king in front, where it can put up a fierce resistance there. From behind the pawns, it's less effective, because his knight can easily hold his c-pawn. And it's not so easy for me to... Uh, blockade. But uh, that said, we'll play the hand we're dealt here. Um, there's no reason for me to take that. Do you think I could win this? I don't think I can win this anymore. Alright, this is tricky to hold. It's got less tricky to hold. Really? There we go. Good to see that my auto draw rules work on the site. Why no auto draw? Because a checkmate is possible there. It's the most ridiculous checkmate ever. However, it's possible. So that's why it doesn't auto draw until um, the, one of the knights gets captured.
Now, honestly, I was trying to checkmate him there. Um, fight to the bitter end. Yeah. Other sites might implement that differently, but Leech Us implements something that's kind of similar to the Fide rule set. Alright. Bishop e2? Alright, that's not Bishop e2. And since this is a rated game, I don't allow mouse... I don't allow takebacks for mouse slips, so... GG. GG no re? Oh, he wants a rematch. Or does he? Okay. Yeah, we can rematch. That's cool. D4. Just gonna shuffle up the openings here. Alright. G4. <laughs> Ah, we're gonna have some fun here tonight. Alright, so... Uh... Yeah, I bet he didn't study this one. Is this even an opening? Does anybody know? Because this doesn't feel very opening-y. Alright, so... I don't know where we're going with this. This looks kind of fun. This looks kind of fun. Alright, so we're just going to develop, you know. Gave up a pawn to get a tempo. My entire kingdom for a tempo here. Um, more than that, I just like the idea that he has to think about what he's doing here. Um, and I kind of don't. Kind of do, but I kind of don't. Here we go. That's legal. We're going to give up another pawn. Ah, but we get some compensation every time. Every pawn. Uh, it's worth something. Alright, so if I play knight c5 here, and he has knight f3... Um... Yeah, why not? This looks fun. If he does b6, I could play d6, just to make things more confusing. Or I could throw in knight b7 first. Sure, let's play knight b7. And we push the pawn. This is our carefully prepared opening theory. It's our repertoire that nobody's ever going to steal. Because you'd have to be an absolute madman to play this on a regular basis. Um, Alright, so... I think I have some compensation here somewhere. Maybe? Alright, so let's see. I play d7 check. One of his pieces moves, so that undefends his bishop. So I could play knight d4. And this is a kaleidoscope of tactics, um, which might work out. We're down five points, but you know. Uh, it's about the adventure. It's not about the outcome. If chess were about the outcome, we would be playing like the real world chess events too. I have played a fair share of those, but when you're playing online, you have to be willing to adventure a bit. Um, all right, so I think that's his way of saying I have to block this check. Is he going to repeat the position with queen b7? I don't think so. I think he's got something else in mind. Yeah. Alright, so we'll hit the bishop. 
and let's see to hit it again like this maybe oh I know we're gonna hit the knight and the bishop and the mate except that's not mate but if that were mate how great would that be um so that's kind of a fun tactic um oh and we're hitting the pawn don't forget the pawn just in case the bishop manages to teleport somewhere such that it no longer defends the pawn all right so that does hit the knight on e2 um there's one slight drawback with that and that we've regained part of our lost material. But yeah, I think our opponent's had enough of this madness. <laughs> Alright. Um, but yeah, that, that was kind of fun. Um, I gained some time on the clock, so really, who came out ahead on that exchange? It was my opponent, but we can pretend that I did. I've got the bishop pair. That's worth like two pawns, right? All right, so f4, yeah, f4 is a little too anxious, a little too predictable. Um, here's a good square for my king, except he plays rook d3 check. And I have to go back. Yeah, it didn't quite work out the way I intended. Um, right, so we got to liquidate a bit. That's okay. So we'll unbury this bishop. And take the c5 square before he can take it. And if he's willing to trade pawns, we'll trade pawns. I have no hesitation to trade there. Uh, okay. Fine. Go ahead. Um, make my day. Can we see knight d5, please? Can we please see knight d5? That's not knight d5. Alright. That's not knight d5. I am disappointed. I'd hoped to see knight d5 there. That would have been so glorious. I've been like the ultimate way to win the game. Um. All right, so we'll kick this. Uh, go back here. Turns out decision making is kind of a difficult art to master. Um, and with practice, you can improve at it, but nobody can ever make the perfect decision. Oh, uh, well, that was a really good choice there. Let's see how he follows it up. Yeah, I have to take this. That's unfortunate. Um... So the question is, can this end game be won, right? Uh, I think it can, with a little bit of luck 
and a little bit of skill. Uh, that's a tricky one. I think this is winning. Uh, it's not easy. Let's see. I have to go up this way. That doesn't actually help his cause any. I'll check this out. Turns out if you know your end games, you can do a lot of wizardry. We're gonna bookmark that. He left. I can't exactly blame him. Um so yeah, people say that like playing with an increment takes all the excitement out of it. Um I'm not entirely convinced. My opponent did put up a very fierce resistance, and it played a very honorable game. I played a kind of dishonorable game there. Um, but, you know, uh, we have to play the game to figure out how it's going to play out. So That was exciting. Um, and to that end, like, as much as people say stuff about engines and training people to play like engines and play without making mistakes and such. Really until, I don't know, until you're capable of like making some money teaching people or competing in tournaments, that sort of engine advice isn't especially applicable. So I'd say in the context of an online blitz game, like anything well, no, Lee Chess does an excellent job classifying, like, Blitz versus Rapid. Um, I'd say if you're not playing against titled players, I mean, yeah, Lee Chess has people that are rated 2,000 and such. You have to be a bit higher rated than that to get a competitive game in here, I think. Um, I know I'm playing below 2,000 at the moment. Um, I wouldn't expect the... Like, okay, this is a tricky position. Obviously, my opponent wasn't prepared for this. I wouldn't expect most people rated... Um, well... I've seen Masters struggle with endgames kind of like this. So... Yeah, I think... Basically, unless you have a title, you probably haven't read about this sort of endgame. Unless you really, 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 really like endgames. And I think endgames are fun. Um, I've read pretty much every endgame book I can get my hands on. Um, including a very large section of the encyclopedia of chess endgames. So um, either that makes me a masochist of some sort, or just somebody who has a very strong fascination with the subject. So, I could give, like, a lecture on this kind of position, really. I know this is a blitz game, and you're not supposed to... And I know I pointed out some key moments during the game, like, if he could play bishop c5, even though that allows me to double his pawns, that affords me no winning chances. Um, I need to keep all the minor pieces on the board as long as possible so that my bishop pair can take advantage um, once I've already amounted a space advantage. Um, what the defender should be doing in such a position, and really he's the attacker. He should be attacking. His pieces are all misplaced here. Um, but with a little more skill, a little more confidence, um, Black should be able to take this one. Um, so an attacker should be trying to um, gain space and trying to get a passed pawn. Defender should be trying to liquidate pawns as much as possible. And the attacker could try to liquidate pieces. So I guess, I guess Bishop c5 is in the vein of liquidating pieces. I think it completely ruins his pawn structure and makes it very difficult for him to win, but regardless, I had this, which allows me to start building a space advantage if he obliges me. Um, 
and he didn't do so so readily. I shuffled here because I am trying to um, see if he'll play knight d5, allowing bishop f1 mate, which is just absolutely ridiculous and probably would have been better end to the game than, than what we saw. Um, so I'm keeping that on the board in a less than obvious manner. Uh, I chose to keep the pawns locked in this way because, well, unless he's willing to push e4, um, the only way he can get a passed pawn is to, like, push uh, g4, which is not happening anytime soon. Um, so if I can delay him from advancing on the king side, I can get my king slightly forward either on the queen side or in the center as I push his king around. Um, really, white should try to get his bishops on his opponent's side of the board to try to either attack or defend. Your bishops are least effective behind your pawns, most effective on your opponent's side of the board because your opponent's pieces and pawns can't hit them so easily. In an endgame, at least, uh, that's the case. I was kind of surprised to see this. Like, this indicates them. This is a waiting move. This is a move saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Or, I have some really complicated plan. Give me some time to execute it. Um, yeah. Bishop e1. Is this the best possible waiting move? I'm not sure. Um, actually, no. This allows him to play a6 and b5 straight away. Bishop g1 would have been a better waiting move, um, but really he should be trying to shuffle his knight around uh, instead of allowing me to push him back. I played this to let him think that I'm trying to go for a repetition with king d5 and king e6. That's not really my goal, but um, he thought it was my goal, so he just retreated. Um, yeah, my goal here... Like, I'm playing for an audience, so I'm trying to win this. So I get my bishop back on the correct diagonal. And then I land my bishop on the opposite side of the board. Like I say, it's most effective back there. Controls quite a few squares. And this king has to run backwards to chase it. If he wants to chase it. And, yeah, just keep gaining space. Um, not so sure about a4. Maybe I should have been pushing my king some more. I don't know. Like, I need my king somewhere in the vicinity of the center so he doesn't get a passed pawn that I can't deal with. Um, also, this is a interesting moment. Um, I didn't calculate this. Um, I think he can play pawn to e3. I think pawn to e3... Well, no. Pawn e3, I play bishop takes e3. Pawn takes e3. Oh, but I don't have any way to stop that. Um, yes, I don't have time for that. And if I take on f6, he takes on f2. Um, and while I can stop the promotion... I'm going to put this on the analysis board here. I think this is his best move. It's not comfortable, but I think that's best for him. And, like, I don't think white can defend this. This is an interesting position, but for white to defend this, he needs to be able to liquidate all the pawns or to construct a fortress. Neither of which seems really possible here. The stockfish think black's winning? Yeah. Stockfish has got that covered. He's got you covered there. What would stockfish play in this position? I think e3. Oh, hg5. Okay, so... I mean, yes, objectively this might be best. Psychologically, this is more difficult for black to deal with, I think. Um... Yeah, so I'm trying to play my pieces forward as aggressively as possible. 
Um, the only reaction which makes sense for black here is to race these pawns down the board now. While my king is so far away from the action. Um, or I guess there is this path. You could try racing this way. Um, but either way, he wants to get something running as quickly as possible. It's absolutely imperative black play aggressively here. After white just got around pushing black around for a few moves. So that's kind of what I was counting on here. Um, so bishop c8 is kind of aggressive looking. King c4 is aggressive looking. a4. At this point, it's pretty clear that white is calling for a battle. Um, black brings it. White escalates. And this is like the last thing your opponent wants to see is while they're trying to knock you out, you're also trying to knock them out. And this is very uncomfortable to a player um, who... Um, how do you describe this? They're up two pawns. They have every expectation that they should win this. They have no expectation that um, you're going to try to win the game. Especially not by force. So somebody who fights back like this, like, put yourself in their shoes. Can I flip the board? I tried F to flip it. Okay. If I click outside the board, I can F to flip it then. Um, so they're finally trying to make some progress here. I like active play in an endgame. It's really the only way to play it. Um, and they're kind of shuffling around trying to calculate things. Really, you have to both know what you're doing and go for it. Um, in that sense, it's kind of like football. You have a plan, and when it's go time, you go. You don't stop and shuffle around a bit. and You don't want to be in that position where you have, like, fourth and five or fourth and eight. You want to be always, like, second and one or third and one. Um... So if your opponent's pushing you around the whole time, it's not going to be an easy game. I forgot that I'm dropping this pawn. When did that happen? Um, oh, that's, this is the first time that happened. But I got a lot of activity. And they blundered. Um, so, yeah, at this point I'm forking the king, or the knight and the pawn. I guess knight h7 is the only way to save it. Although it's a terribly passive move. Yeah, this is only like minus one. So if black plays as perfectly, he has some winning chances against a white who plays as perfectly. Not that I did, but if you just drop the knight, that becomes a lot harder to win. Um, also, the this like retreating move stuff now you gotta buckle down like here black had some drawing chances black had lots of drawing chances here um but it's not so easy you need to i don't know i'm not sure how you manage to like figure out how to draw this after you just blundered a knight. But if you start from this position... Hmm. Oh. Actually, it's not so hard to draw this, is it? I'm not sure. It looks like it should be easy. But I'm not sure it is so simple. Is can this be drawn, Stockfish? Plus, plus 1.2. Yeah, bishop c5 is the move that keeps coming into my mind. But I'm not so sure that it's a good thing. 
because what if white trades? Then we're calling this equal. How is this equal? Oh, right, right, right. So white's king is barely not in time because black's king advances and he gets to trade the bishop for the pawn. So, yeah, bishop c5 is the best attempt for a draw. If black plays very actively the remainder of the game, and if white doesn't do so, black could draw that. Um, but, yeah. Okay, black finds this here. Curiously, maybe here I can take it. Because um, my king boxes out his king. I can take this, right? Yeah. This would have simplified my life here considerably. I somehow imagined my opponent's king getting to d4, just like the previous position, but here he's down a tempo, and that makes all the difference. Um, but I didn't go for that. Oh, but here I found it. Yeah, not sure why it was so much easier to find here than with this king on e7. It's basically the same position. Slightly worse variant, because you can actually start to go after my a-pawn. Um, oh, I could just play a5. If you've read books on endgames like I have, you'll know about this a5 thing. And the point is, see, like, there's this little box here. He can't get past the box. And so if he tries to go the other way, it's just zugzwang at some point. So we've assembled this nice little fortress here. I forgot these arrows are directional. Yeah, but we've got like this nice little thing going on where um, the king is just completely boxed out. And so, I mean, yes, in some positions black could play a6, but... Yeah, a5 is the easy way to win that. Um, and you just zugzwang your opponent's king. And if you don't believe that's a thing, um, like if you don't believe that white can get the opposition, first of all, this is a bishop we're talking about, but even if somehow the bishop couldn't move, um, uh, I'm trying to find a way to present this in a convincing manner. Like, if... Um, how does white triangulate here? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, it's very convincing because white can just shuffle the king in this nice little triangle here until this black king moves away and then white can play king to e5. So, anyway... That's your little grains of endgame knowledge here. So, this proceeds. I missed the obvious a5, because I don't know. Um, I didn't play that either. I played this. And my opponent plays the best move. Oh, king a5 draws here. Why did I think this is winning? Oh, king b4. I've seen this before. I was concerned about this during the game, but I forgot. Um, yeah. Huh. Well, that's a shame. That's... A pretty sad blemish on this fun little victory here. Which, by the way, um... Well, no. Yeah, there's no way to stop King B4. By virtue of the fact that I've played King E5, I've already given my opponent everything he wants here. Like, King E4 is the clearer approach here. Because you, my opponent gets to select between king d6, uh, where I zugzwang him and win the c pawn, or uh, king 
b6, where um, this king d5 works directly because he doesn't have the tempo to get to b4. But if I were like not to pay attention for a move, then he'd get back here. But if, as long as I have my wits about me, um, he doesn't get this in. Wait. Oh. Uh, this works here. That's interesting. Um, so bishop d1 and bishop c2 both win. Because what? Because there's a zugzwang again. That's amazing. You would think that somehow in this position, white would run out of zugzwangs. Oh, right, right, right. Both king c5, as well as moving the bishop and sacrificing it on d1 instead. Um, allow white to promote and black's king is just ever so slightly too far away which is funny yeah, he's just one move out of the box I've seen this before too anyway uh, it's been a fun session here thanks for watching thanks for stopping by we'll do some more fun games next time uh, we'll see you then have a good night.